Hi, my name is Stuart Williams, and I work for Magenic, and here's another exciting episode of Things You Can Do with Node. This demo is in Node, but it applies to any scenario in which you want to use RSA, public, and private keys to make a JavaScript web token. We choose Node because it's a nice, simple uh, way to do a demo. There are some other demos that are in .NET that you can see. Uh, but I wanted to use this to just call out some core things. So let's start with the following thing. We need uh, to get a set of public and private keys. There's lots of sites uh, on the internet for doing this, and you can certainly use any of them. You can also use any of the open source tools uh, or tools in Visual Studio. But essentially what you need is a public and private key generated uh, in what's called the PEM format, which is this format here. It's base64 encoded, and there's a beginning signature and an ending signature, and you end up with a public and private key pair. And generators usually allow you to specify how many bits of strength you want. So for this demo, we have uh, checked these into our project as a public and private key. Believe me when I tell you I will never use this key pair for anything ever else again but it's useful uh, to know what it is. The other thing we're going to need is we're going to need the Node.js library, JS web token, and you can find that on Auth0. Um, Auth0 is a great organization that focuses on authentication on the web, and their Node.json web token library is excellent and well-maintained, and so we'll be using that uh, today. The origin of this demo is is that uh, using this fine library, I found it pretty hard to do the one thing I wanted to do, which was to use public keys and private keys. So let's walk through some things. We want to read in the public key and private key off of disk in order to use them. I'll point out that unless you specify the override of UTF-8 to get a string, what you get is a byte array. And weirdly, it works in some places and not in others. So you're better off just having them be strings. The library will correctly interpret the resulting strings, which is just a concatenation of all those lines that you saw, and it does the right thing. The second thing is, is and this was the part that was really hard, is that everywhere that we're asked to specify an algorithm, we must specify the algorithm RS-256. Um, RS-256 is essentially the sigil that says we're using RSA public and private key pairs in PEM format. Now that we've done that, we're probably going to want to have a, a JavaScript web token or JWT that has some payload elements that are of use uh, in our client application, right? So the point of JWTs is to provide a signed way of knowing that the payloads that are passed to you uh, are legit. And that is uh, done in a way that's friendly to the HTTP protocol, which means that JWTs can be passed on the query string, they can be put into a head element, uh, they can be passed as part of a payload body as a post because they're just properly URL encoded strings. Uh, and so they won't cause you any encoding issues or whatever. So here we're going to make a little dummy payload, and we're just going to put three fields into it. So we're going to make a little sample demo payload, mostly to prove that what we put in, we get out. In this case, I'm just uh, putting in three arbitrary fields, but you could put in any fields that would be useful for your application. And the guidance we'll give you here is to keep the size of the JWT relatively small, put in only what you need to put in. Now we need to sign them. In order to make a pretty robust signature, we need an issuer, a subject, and an audience. The issuer is the organization issuing the JWT. In this case, it's my little software company. A subject, which is typically the intended user of the token. And lastly, the audience is, where is this token supposed to be good? And in this case, uh, I'm setting an audience of my website. And then uh, the other thing, although it's not a uh, part of sort of the core fields 
uh, but highly suggested is you always set an expiration. Here, I'm setting it to 24 hours, and you can follow the link and see um, different time span formats that you can use to set the expiration. And uh, you should definitely always set an explicit expiration and check for it when you're validating the token. And depending on your use case and scenario, you may decide to make that longer or shorter. Okay, that being said, we now need to make some signing options. So we set issuer, subject, and audience, and expiration that we have above. And most importantly, we set the algorithm to RS-256. If you don't do this, misery and suffering ensues. Then all we have to do is call sign. We pass in the payload. That's the data that is for our application. We pass in the private key, and we pass in this list of options. And what comes out the other end is a token, which we'll show you in a minute. If you get a token back, you're going to want to verify the token. To make the verification as robust as humanly possible, we want to check the issuer, subject, and audience and age of the token to make sure the token hasn't expired. And then lastly, and very importantly, we want to explicitly specify the algorithm that we're going to use to verify the token. And again, we simply call the verify method. Notice that when we verify, we're using the public key. So we sign with a private key, but we verify with a public key. Let's go look at the sign line again. Sign with a private key, verify with a public key. You can call decoding. And when we call the, the decoding method, we actually get the header and the payload, and the header sometimes has useful things in it. Let's run our little demo. In VS Code, I've set it up to do debugging, so all you have to do is hit F5, and what you get is it runs, and you can see the our payload, you can see the option string, you can see the resulting token that emerged, you can see that it it successfully verified and dumped out the metadata that we need. Notice that in this case, the ver what comes out of the verifier is actually a combination of the header elements that we specified in our options when we made the token and our user-defined payload elements, along with the elements, for example, such as the expiration and when the token was generated. So IIT is when the token was generated, and expiration is when the token is supposed to be no good anymore. And everything else is the fields that we set before. So the library does a nice job of enriching the resulting metadata. 